Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, today's NetLab discussing STEAM's twin bridge technology. Um, also, welcome to the first day of, of autumn, which is today. So I uh, just wanted to get everybody up to speed that way. And today we're gonna talk about this twin bridge technology that, that STEAM has got built into the horizon radios, which is really kind of some cool stuff. Um, we're going to kind of take a little bit deeper dive into it, number one, explaining what it is, uh, and then going to kind of walk through um, exactly how do we configure that. So pretty easy stuff. Um, don't necessarily have to worry about taking a lot of notes as you'll be able to get uh, a copy of the of this webinar as well. Um, should be emailed out to you tomorrow, and then also this will be available up on the website. So, and if you have any questions, um, Feel free to answer. Um, Perry's on the call as well, so she's going to be monitoring that, and, and as well as, as we'll try and take some looks at that. Um, or if you have questions afterwards, feel free to reach out. So as we kind of take a look at this, <clears throat> just to kind of catch some of the, the the new faces or new names that are out there, uh, just exactly who Esteem is. Um, Kind of, of looking at this from the from kind of a high level or the 50,000 foot level is is we're basically established back in 1982. So we've been exclusively designing and implementing and manufacturing the wireless modems as well as the network for over 35 years. Um, we are the manufacturer. So a couple of things that that means is is that all the products are actually designed specifically to meet some of the demands and the rigors that we see within industrial automation, extended heat temperatures. We're seeing things that that we'll have that are going to be maybe a dirtier environment or a little bit more vibration, just some of those industrial type environments as opposed to what you see like in the hospitals or a home type of environment. Because we, we actually are the manufacturer, we also control all of the IP for this. And this is both on the hardware as well as the software side. We write the drivers from the ground up. So when we have specific requests for features, such as this twin bridge technology though that was actually requested for a specific site it allows us to be able to implement this not only very easily but also very quickly you know this is a matter of days as opposed to, to months or quarters or years that, that you can get with some other folks also what that does is that we kind of our goal is not to leave anything behind and so we're very very committed to compatibility so the products that we have today are backwards compatible to the ones that were out yesterday you know, we look at it, the industrial automation, it's not always the, the quickest or the most rapid to adopt new technology, as well as it's a very big investment. And so we wanna make sure that, that we support those applications going forward. Everything is still made here in the US. Uh, we're based out in Washington state, as, as well as where most of the manufacturing is done right here in the US. Um, what this gives us is basically the industry's most complete portfolio. And we've got FCC licensed frequency radios, and, and we have radios that are lived within that 150 to 174, the 217 to 220, 450 to 470, and even the 4.9 gigahertz. Then we have the license free frequencies, which are 900 megahertz, 2.4, 5.8, which you're probably very familiar with. This is really kind of where we're gonna be living today is within these frequencies. To date, we've got a little over 45,000 modems in, the, in service worldwide. Um, predominantly in the Americas, but we do have some things over into to Europe and Africa and the Middle East as well. As we kind of look at that is, is where do we actually go? Where does this, our products kind of get put into play? Well, we're very heavily into the water, wastewater, oil and gas, mining, material handling, power and energy, agriculture, uh, factory floor automation, which is the also including AGVs as well as what we call infrastructure, which is kind of a catch-all. These are things that can be anything from just connecting buildings to, to doing campus-wide Wi-Fi. There's a lot of different things that kind of feed into that. One of the things that we see going across all this is within all of these heavy industries as well as in general, is we're kind of going through this digital transformation. Now really what kind of what that looks like it's really kind of twofold. Number one is we're changing the whole interface into the communications that we're dealing with. Um, we're moving away from a serial-based communication into an ethernet-based. Now the serial side of things was really designed to be device-level communications. It was PLCs talking to PLCs, for instance. 
Now, as we kind of are evolving the data itself into an Ethernet-based stack, what that really is bringing us is the ability to network this. So now, all of a sudden, we're moving from a device-level communications into network-level communications. Kind of this industry 4.0 that you can kind of see on that graphic is now we're dealing with these IoT networks or ITOT networks in which now everything is being brought in. Those of you that kind of sat through the last few presentations or webinars, we, we talked about the hybrid networks and, and the meshing. So we've, we're kind of now bringing this even a little bit more forward now. So we kind of take that in mind and we've moved into this network side of things. We've got today's connected model. And this is really kind of what it looks like is we've got to have our things out there in the field. These are your PLCs or end devices. You can see kind of on the left side of that graphic. And we've got to have some connectivity. And then we need that data and then we need the analytics, right? So basically we're gonna get the information from the far left side, then we have to have, be able to actually take and make that actionable information, which is gonna happen over on that far right side. Now the, the key part of where Esteem plays is in, in that connectivity space. So when we start looking at connectivity within the industrial automation realm, we're faced with some other challenges or maybe some unique challenges that are a little bit different than, than typical or a factory floor, something that, that's very close and concise. We're dealing with things such as long distances. This can be across a city, these can be across the county. Um, we're moving across waterways, we're going across roadways, we've got applications that have to be mobile. Essentially, we're dealing with a lot of remote assets, right? And so, because of that, wireless makes a lot of sense because now all of a sudden we can overcome all of those challenges simply by using the wireless. We bring that into that network. So when we kind of look at this and, and what we talked about a couple of weeks ago is this hybrid networking is down in that lower right hand corner. You'll see that, that we're dealing with copper, we're dealing with fiber. Now all of a sudden we can branch out and bring all these remote assets into that same network using wireless. Or, or RF, if you want to kind of take it even a little bit, a little step further. So as we kind of look forward with this, what you see is that when we take that same model we were looking at before with a connectivity, well, what we're getting today or what we're starting to see in today's applications is that, you know, with that network, the gateway, the connectivity, now all of a sudden what we're starting to see is we may need to have multiple networks going across the same thing and we need to have these kind of in an isolated status. Um, we may need to air gap these so that we're not necessarily, you know, from a security standpoint, keeping these isolated. So in order to address this, what we did is to, to kind of have this dual connectivity is we basically came out with what we're terming as the twin bridge technology. Now, really what this does is it allows you, the user, or your users to simultaneously run two independent, completely isolated networks across a single wireless infrastructure, okay? Also en enables you to, to create an air gap between, say, like a control system and a visualization network that are separate from one another, but we can do it on one radio, so we can reduce the typical cost that for additional hardware. Um, it also reduces the complexity of trying to now bring all of that together with additional hardware. And because we can air gap this, we actually can increase the security side of it. So to kind of illustrate kind of what, what this looks like, so in a very typical application, we look at, and you can kind of see with the, the red line here, um, is we've got our, our typical process or SCADA or control network that we wanted to link in a, a few of these different locations, right? So we can now tie into the radio on this location. But, it, but in a lot of the, of the installations, we may wanna have kind of this dual purpose. So now all of a sudden, we can now take, and you can kind of see the blue lines here for, and this would kind of be our visualization network, or this could be your IoT network. Um, it's just a, a secondary network. And you can kind of see this, that, that we can now go through and define who sits within that network. Now, when you kind of combine this and look at both of these overlaid on top of each other, what you can actually see here is that we have both the red as well as the blue networks going out. Now, they don't always have to take necessarily the exact same path. Like you can see, some of these incorporate aspects of both networks. 
this one we're going to have is just part of kind of that control network or this may be just part of the visualization or your iot network now we can run on one common wireless network kind of these dual pathways they share the common stream but they are completely isolated from each other okay this is really kind of what we brought into our horizon series and so when we kind of look at the horizon in general just to kind of give you the idea of what else is involved here um, this is the one where we have the industrial mesh technology so we can have redundant self-healing scalable networks and that's available to both bridges on here that we were just talking about kind of this twin bridge technology um, any device can really be set up in multiple modes of operation we can do layer two or layer three networks um, for the the twin bridge technology those are basically in the layer two world those are basically we've got two bridged networks running simultaneously all of this is encrypted with aes 256 encryption um, we can configure this very simply with java based utilities um, the twin bridge technology does take a little bit more and we're going to step through those those steps one by one coming up here in just a couple slides and then this is also what we have within the twin bridge technology now this is available in 900 megahertz we're doing it at 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5.8 gigahertz for the horizon now if you also want to get into having wi-fi capabilities into this we can do that at <clears throat> excuse me at the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5.8 gigahertz so not only do we have the dual bridge out there but to your wi-fi devices we're going to have dual ssids so you can have certain customers or a certain workers that, that are available on each of these different networks and you can keep those isolated so as we kind of take a little bit deeper dive now into this and say okay how do we actually configure this so when we, we actually are, go into the the web page of each radio and, and we're just going to kind of step through this we're going to go right up through the setup tab which you can see up here and the first actually thing that we're going to have to do is select a mode of operation so this is going to be an ap bridge then basically select that from the drop down then select the next button and what we're going to do is if you want to actually have dhcp services running on this we can be a dhcp client we can be a dhcp server for most industrial applications they're running just static ip addressing we just leave this selected for off right you can select this if you want to be a root bridge um, that's kind of a, a part of a previous conversation uh, but this is actually where you can select it to say this is the root bridge or it's not um, and then select next this is going to bring us to the next and this is just going to walk through kind of this wizard format this is where we can set the ip address again this is for for our first bridge we can give it the ip address the net mask of it as well as what the default route okay now we said we can go ahead and hit next this is where we're going to select the bandwidth in which this is going to actually be communicating or transmitting on and so by default um, this is a 2.4 gigahertz so it's actually going to come default at 20 megahertz wide now you can also select 40 megahertz if you're in an area that's very noisy or has a lot of interference we can actually go down to 5 or 10 megahertz wide and kind of skinny up to try and get away from any any sort of interference this is where we're going to set the max distance now what this is looking at is simply between links how far is that going what this is really introducing is going to be a delay in that communication so the, can i think of this as time of flight if we have a longer link it's going to take longer in order to get out there and get the acknowledge back so you can actually tune this specifically for your individual links and you can also set the power level of the radio right here it's just a drop down menu and what you want to do is to go ahead and hit next okay, this is actually where we're going to select what channel that we're actually operating on so it's a pull down window and that's going to look a little bit different depending upon what frequency you're looking at um, but we want to select that now, important part here is that everybody has to be running on the same channel okay so as you're setting this up make sure that, that you're selecting that the same for everyone and what we're going to get in the first one here is this is going to be the ssid this is going to be kind of that name that you see or the of that network that's being broadcast out for say client connectivity and okay. this can be anything that you want alphanumeric characters um, and then you have basically two different data rates here 
And so we have high throughput rates. And typically this is where you're gonna leave this by default. These are kind of your 802.11 end rates. Now we can also go back and, and set it to what we call standard rates for legacy products. So if we've got an old 802.11 G radio, like I mentioned before, it's compatibility is a big issue for us, is that we want to make sure that we can include that. So if you're adding a new radio into an older network, we basically think of that as your compatibility rates. Once we set that, then we're gonna go ahead and hit next. This is where we're gonna set the basically the first level of encryption. And this is gonna be, think of this as your access point out to a client. And so we can select from WPA2, and this can be done basically four different flavors. We can have PSK, which is just short for pre-shared key. And then we have enterprise, which is in going to basically ask you to point it at an authentication server, something like a RADIUS server. We support both of those. And there's actually two different options. We can have AES-128, we can have AES-256. This is something that's configurable by you, and you can actually choose which one is the most appropriate for your network or what your security needs to be. Um, this is where we can actually hide the beacon SSID. So what this is, is if we're in a 2.4 gigahertz or a 5.8 gigahertz, you can actually select this to on. And so your, let's say, everyday Joe that's driving around isn't going to see that network being broadcast. They won't see it from their phone or from a, say, their laptop or a tablet. They won't see that network SSID being broadcast. So we go forward with next. Um, this is going to be what that passphrase is for your WPA. And again, and so this is something and then it generates the key. But rather than trying to re remember a static key, a hexadecimal key, so you can actually put this in, very similar to what you have on your home router, and it generates that key. Once you have that, then we're gonna go ahead and hit select next. The next screen you're gonna come to is, is basically going to be something for what we call a MAC filter. And what this allows you to do is that we can select either to allow all, and this is again concerning Wi-Fi type clients coming into an access point. We want to allow everybody that has the correct SSID and encryption. We can go in and actually filter this and says, okay, not only do they have to have the right encryption and SSID, but they've got to be on this approved list. This can be something that, that we set by MAC address. Or if you have a known rogue computer, maybe something that was stolen, maybe something that disappeared. There was a former employee that there you had a, a bring your own device. We can actually go in and deny that MAC address so that it can't join the network. Now, one thing to kind of point out here is also if we get to say a 2.4 gigahertz radio or a 5.8 gigahertz radio, and all we want to use it for is the bridge. One thing that we can do here is actually select this to where it says allow only those MACs in the list below and then leave that list blank. Essentially what that does is it denies any sort of Wi-Fi access into the radio. So again, kind of an added value or an added feature in the security realm. So we can actually use a 2.4 and turn off the Wi-Fi side of it. Okay, so this next screen that you're going to come to after you hit next it is really kind of where the magic happens. This is where we create peers or we create that mesh network. And so by default, and you're gonna to wanna to leave this at as yes for repeater, repeater peer capability or the peer capability. And then this is where we're gonna add in the peers that we want this particular bridge to be talking to or this radio to talk to. So if we have two radios, we're gonna put in the second radio. So how you do that is you actually select the add right here. And then when you hit next, now what that's gonna bring you to is a little bit deeper dive into this page. So really the two fields are really where we need to, to kind of be concerned with is gonna be this first one. Um, this is where we're gonna go ahead and add in the, either the WLAN zero MAC address from the corresponding radio, or you can just type in the serial number and, and we can calculate that for you. I, I recommend using the, the serial number side of things. That way we don't happen to get the wrong MAC address. Or we don't fat finger anything. It, it makes things very easy. For those of you that also attended a few weeks ago and we started talking about altering the, that mesh technology to force it into maybe a, an unnatural 
pathway, this is where we can adjust the path length. Okay. This is where actually also where you can see that those high throughput rates or the 195E rates on this. This is where we can have the also the encryption. Now, what this encryption is dealing with is strictly on the bridge level. So this doesn't have anything to do with Wi-Fi. This is basically going to be between a steam radio to a steam radio. So basically we have anything from, from very basic or, or no encryption, and then we also can go from a basic WEP 64-bit all the way up through AES-256. Now by default, we have this left at AES-128, um, mainly because it, that's kind of a, a, the maximum level that, that was for the previous generation products, but there's nothing to prevent you from setting that up to a higher level, say the AES-256. Now, there's going to be basically right here, you can see kind of the default encryption key. Okay. So one of the things that you can change on this, if you want to go through in a hexadecimal format, you can actually enter in your own key to change that. Now, if you don't want to do that, really what we can do is, is we borrow kind of from the Wi-Fi world and we can actually have two fields here, say that our link ID and then a passphrase. And then basically we can hit generate key. So it, it will actually generate that hexadecimal key for you. Okay, once this is actually done, we have our, our MAC address set in here, the encryption, and the encryption needs to be the same at all locations. Um, then we hit create peer, and that's actually gonna add this one in. If we have multiple peers within this, and we we're, we're gonna want to go back and, and add that as well. Okay, so once we're, we actually go back into that page, is if we'd have that, then we can just hit next. Okay, and really where that's gonna take us, let's pass this page, into kind of the final setup of this. Now, if we're only gonna have a single bridge going across this, then basically this is where we would commit the changes, and then it's gonna reboot, and basically we've got an operating system. But kind of what we're talking about today is this twin bridge technology. So what that's going to entail is we're going to go into the advanced page. And so before I go there, um, a couple of fields within this is that this radio ID is strictly the name of that location. It's just strictly text field for your purposes. Makes things a little bit easier to recognize when you're looking at the status page rather than reading it by a MAC address. You can see it's the conference room or four street repeater, uh, anything like that. So that's your field to fill in whatever you'd like. Um, then the, these last two devices or, or entries here are, are strictly to do with security so that we can actually kind of limit what the discovery tool or the ENS suite is actually going to be able to do to where we can make it to where it can discover, but we can't make changes. Um, we leave this at the end, and then you can actually clamp your network down or make it a little bit more secure from, from the discovery side. This is where we can also turn off remote access into the radio whatsoever. The only one point of caution is if you do this, forget your password, or if you do this and the person that has the password is no longer with the company, whether they left or they were terminated, um, th there is no way for us to remotely access this radio and it will need to come back here to get reset on that, okay? So as we kind of look forward is, is basically now we're gonna go into the advanced setup. So if you just select this, it's gonna bring you to another screen. Okay, so what we've got here is you'll see is we're gonna go down under wireless LAN settings. We're gonna choose wireless or WLAN one device. So we do that, we're going to hit next right down here. Okay, when we do that, it's gonna take us to this screen. So that what we want to do here is now all of a sudden, by default, WLAN 1 is off. And we're going to now turn this on. So we're going to select this radial here, which is now going to create a virtual bridging interface. Okay. And then basically we can, if you want to jump right into the advanced settings, the peer settings themselves, or we just leave it on this basic chain right here and then hit setup. Now what that's going to do is go through exactly through the same process we just went through, but now we're dealing with bridge number two or the twin bridge of this. And it can be on its own subnet. It can be on the same subnet. Um, it does need to have a unique IP address. So we don't have two IPs on the same device. 
and we're just going to go through the, that exact same process chain. Okay, so at the end of that, now what's going to look a little bit different is rather than than kind of that last page where we could jump to the advanced, is that you're going to be presented with a, this page here again. So now when we get back to this, we select accept on this. And what that's going to then drive you to is this page. Now, all we need to do is to do a commit and reboot, press this button. Okay. Now, what that does is you've taken both of those bridge interfaces, we've configured it. Now, what happens is when we commit and reboot, it reboots back with those changes that we've made from the, the previous configuration. So, in this case, what it would actually do is going to come up. And we're actually going to then be left with, or, or I guess we're presented with, now all of a sudden we've got this dual network or these twin bridges that we can run throughout our network. Okay. So hopefully that, that makes some sense. Um, I don't see any questions on things yet, but, but it's actually a very simple setup, but it's an incredibly powerful feature that, that we've enabled for this. Um, so if you have any further questions, um, feel free to reach out. We can walk through setting this up. But it, when you really kind of consider it, it's essentially we're getting two different wireless networks all built into that same hardware. And we can make a much more of a secure network by air gapping those two sides from each other. Okay. Now, this is all part of a series that we're doing kind of some webinars, which are a little bit lighter. And then we get into these net labs, which we kind of go through some of the configurations in a little bit more. Um, the next one that we've got coming up in a couple of weeks is actually dealing with wireless security. What goes into that? What do we need to be concerned with? How do we actually take and roll out the most secure wireless network? And that's very simple to do, but it is something that, that has to be done um, as part of a bigger picture. It, it don't rely on wireless to be your total security suite. We want to use it to enhance your security or build into a better security. Okay. So if you've got any questions, um, we've got a couple minutes here. We try and keep these down to a half an hour, but uh, if you've got any questions, you can, can ask them, pose these kind of down into your that sidebar that you probably see buried down in the corner. Um, if not, you've got my email address, um, or you can just call that and, and you can either talk to myself or anybody in the support side of things um, on that. So I'll give kind of a couple minutes, and if anybody has any questions there, uh, if not, um, have a great first day of, of autumn, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys in the uh, in a couple weeks. Thanks.